Well, today I'm at Brands Hatch for level two of the Californian Superbike School. Um, I've done level one end of last year, if you remember, we did it at Bedford Autodrome, so I'll put a link to the video at the top there. This is level two, so expanding on all the skills we learned at level one and moving on and progressing my track riding, really. And some of these lessons can be used on the road. So if that sounds of interest, grab yourself a cuppa because this episode is all going to be about track training and making me a faster rider on track. Chopsy, roll the intro. today and my name's Gary. Um, we have some on-track coaches and their job is to make sure that you can apply the techniques you learn in the classroom when you're out there riding. The California Superbike School was founded in 1980 by Californian Keith Code. Keith's methodology has been taught to numerous championship winning riders such as Wayne Rainey, James Tosland and Leon Camier. His books, video and schools were the first to make that knowledge available to everybody. Each skill builds on the last and creates a complete package of control and confidence. The school's levels are done in order, one through to four. Each of the first three levels presents five precise technical riding skills. Each level can be completed in one day. Today, we complete level two. That's the briefing done. We've had the initial briefing. I'm level two today, so level two people have got to go up to the classroom to have our briefing. Probably a little recap of what we should have remembered from level one. <laughs> Let's go up and have a look. The day consists of classroom sessions, then followed by a track session. So you're taught the lesson in the classroom, you then go out and put it into practice on track. The first classroom session was about reference points, picking up reference points on the track and then how they can work for you to actually work out braking markers, turning points, etc. Classroom session done, it was time to hit the track. So that is the first session done. It's a bit of a rush. I couldn't get any cameras on the bike. They wanted an extra tether on the camera on the front. So couldn't get any cameras of that first one. But the first lesson was all about uh, focusing, you know, reference points on the track. So you basically had to go around, uh, pick out one reference point on the track, which you're going to use as a turn in or something like that. So same story as before, you know, start you off slowly, fourth gear only, no brakes, get a feel for the track. Um, and pick out some reference points. And the instructor went in front, pointed some potential reference points out, you know, whether that is marks on the track, skid marks, but just put reference points in where your turning point's gonna be, where your sort of apex is gonna be and where your exit is gonna be. And I think the next lesson is gonna be sort of putting that together. So choosing one reference point on one corner from that first session, and I guess building on that for the next one. All right, so I'll see you in the next session. John, right. so, yeah. uh, we're looking at okay. reference points in that session. Yeah. Where did you find a reference point that you're now using? Just coming into here, I thought was quite. Okay. So that, that's um no sorry this what so, past Paddock Hill. So yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah, that, that's like that. That's it. So yeah. just coming in here, there's a little bit of like uh, black, dark tar, yes, darker tarmac, yeah, 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 and yeah. that to turn in. Yeah. That's the main one. It's quite hard to find you'll, them. You'll find on the next session, I think the turn point cross will actually be just about there. Right, so okay. So you nailed that one. Yeah, yeah. So where are you looking when you come out of clearways? Because it, it's, this is one where it's a long, long corner, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, so I'm sort of over here, and then I must admit, I guess I'm looking a little bit at the curb. Just I should, I, I'm, the yeah, I'm thinking about it. I should be looking further to, to the exit of the right. turn, shouldn't I? There's a Marshall's post here. Yeah. Big orange square on it it's, stand, it's standing up you can see the guy standing in there as i hit that turn point 
And I'm come, driving around that corner, that's yeah. where I'm looking. Right. And it just brings you on a really nice line around right. there okay. and on the gas. Um, and of course, reference points is what they mean to you. So yeah. you're a reference point, your reference point, we might be using the same reference point, yeah. but applying a different, different meaning ways. to it. It's quite hard because obviously you're not going as fast. You need to know the ones which suit when you're going a bit faster, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. So it's quite hard to choose them when you're going slower. But as that might, sped up then. You might have a reference point that actually at the moment, that reference point is where I turn. But yeah. as you get quicker later on in the day, actually, it's the same reference point, but I turn three oh, feet in front yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, I so see. It's, it, you can still use the same reference point, but you apply Just, different meanings. Right, I see. Okay, okay. interesting. Session three was the three step and this built on level one's two step drill, looking at the exit of a turn as early as possible. In this drill, concentrate on taking your eyes off the apex when you knew you were going to hit it and looking at the exit point as soon as you could. Looking at three step, what's the benefits to you then of using the three step? It definitely drives you out to the next corner a bit more. Yep. I find it a bit... I'm used to looking at the curb, I've noticed. Yeah, you, know, you mentioned that. Yeah, yeah, that. and I haven't forced myself to look away. I'm like, oh, what's going on down here? Do you know what I mean? It takes yeah. a little while to... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, but no, it's definitely helped, and it does sort of slow everything down a little bit, yeah. to, right. so you can concentrate and, a little bit more. And that's that's the key. What we're looking at, I was just talking to Matt about it, it's about yeah. that flow of the... The information coming from, yeah, through yeah, our yeah. eyes to our brain. Yeah. You know, the analogy I use is that the train going into a tunnel. Because when we're on the train, it's like beautiful looking at the beautiful countryside. It's great, and all of a sudden, it's <laughs> yeah. We feel like we're going quicker. But the speed's the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's how your brain gets messed up. Yeah. If you if you target things onto something coming into the corner, uh, you're all looking. This is, yeah, exactly. It's that, whizzing it's, right past. Oh, it's going, yeah. going too fast. Yeah, yeah. You go, you go tense. So we've got to get our vision right. Vision is key to yeah. being relaxed. If we're relaxed, we turn relaxed, we can steer really quickly. Yeah. So if we turn on the turf, we're going to get that good drive. No. All comes together. Yeah. Your drive out of Druids is really, really good as well. Is it? When okay. you're not balked by other bikes. Yeah, yeah, that's the trouble, isn't it? Um, the, there's just there's a couple of things at the moment with body position, which is probably just um, holding you back a little Josh, bit. I'm struggling without the tank grips on it. It's very yeah. slippy. I'm, I'm really noticing. When you said about relaxing the upper body, yeah. I can't, I've got so, to be in the turn before I can. So remember, uh, we, we haven't got one today. So it's foot peg under here. Yeah. And as you come to the corner, drive the ankle up. So it's not just foot peg and squeeze, okay. it's drive up and in. Okay. bike has been fantastic. I knew it would be. The s 1000 rr what a machine on track. Oh, it's incredible. So tyre-wise, we've got the race techs. Nicely bubbled them kitties up. I've uh, dropped a bit of pressure in the tyres. I'm not sure what to go for. I went for 32 in the rear and about 30-ish in the front. I actually rode this up here today. So it was an hour, an hour and 20 minutes riding this up here in the, uh, the road mode, so fully comfortable suspension, and then you come on the track, put it in the race mode, and it's, and it's a race bike. I'm, conv I'm convinced this bike, I said before, this is almost like a sports tour of this machine, and it is to a degree, but uh, this is the first time I've done a decent distance on it. So nice just popping the cruise control on and just sitting at 80 on the motorway. Even pop the heated grips on for a second this morning. It was a little bit chilly at half five this morning. And you get to a track, and then it's the ultimate track bike. It's, it's an incredible package, this. The last few sessions have been about visual. Today's all about visual reference points, visual checks, using your peripheral vision rather than having your eyes darting about the place. So um, 
in this next session, we've got to try and use, you know, not move your eyes, but look at your next turning point, the apex, without actually looking at it, using your peripheral vision and then not looking at it, prefixing it, if you like, that point within your peripheral vision, and then moving your eyes to it. So uh, this one we've got, use three gears, light brakes, and do the best you can, but all about building up your vision. And the idea being, is if you're looking further away, everything is a little bit slower. If you're looking right down on the ground, everything's moving very quickly. So all this whole visualization stuff is just to make everything appear slower for your brain to process. Let's go do it. Not the way you want to end your day. Now is probably the perfect time to mention track cover from BE Moto. I had my double R, or BMW's double R, fully covered for the track, so if the worst happened then I'd bend it, and I wasn't liable for a 20 grand motorcycle. If you've got an expensive motorcycle, check out BE Moto's track cover below, and don't let the fact you've got a dear bike stop you going on track. Advert over. Jizz machine. Oh, I enjoyed that. I was motoring. Proper, proper motoring. I think me and the 360 cocked up, so I uh, don't think I've got any footage of that one. <laughs> Let's go for the deep roof, so I say. Back at home this morning, it was, yeah. it, was sort of, it wasn't a smooth flow through the corners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As we've gone through the day, um, your, your helmet movement is very, it's just like... Yeah. And now following like around Paddock, and Clark, Clark Clearways, Clark Kerr. Clearways, yeah. Wow. It's just, you're there, you, and you, you're right up. You can see the chin up. Yeah, looking. Driving yeah. towards that, yeah, yeah. right out of that bend. Yeah. And, and so what's happened now is, you're getting ahead of, where you, you're keeping where you are in your peripheral, yeah. but you're working your vision, we weren't where, where you forward. want to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's, that's the that's difference that's between the start of the day. That's you the were, target, start isn't it, yeah. Being kind of like, Turn point, apex, exit. Now you're you're already at your apex as you're going towards the turn point. You're still seeing the peripheral hit it, looking at the apex. As you go towards the apex, you're looking yeah. at the exit, but you're looking at the apex and your peripheral. I can, I can tell that my helmet is, they say, much more static, oh, yeah. and you're just looking, there's less darting, it's less hectic, isn't it? It just yeah. slows everything down. It takes all the drama out of it. It does, yeah, it and does. It's the drama that, that, that sort of creates these yeah, yeah. reactions in the brain yeah. where we've, oh, I'm going, oh, I'm too quick. Yeah. Oh, I don't like this. Yeah. So we've worked on visuals for the first four sessions. We're going to spin it round now, and Gary's going to talk to you about braking. Oh, OK. So Brilliant. we're going to look at braking into the corner and trail braking. Yeah, oh, wow, OK. Um, because you're going to have full use of your gears and brakes on this one. You've got a really good balance now at the pace that you're going. Yeah. You're giving yourself spare attention still. Yeah, exactly. So you can think about what Gary said, what Mike's showing you. It's coming together yeah. really nicely. Yeah. Brilliant Super news, and that's fantastic. Oh, Sma God. Smashing, thanks, boys. You're back up to the briefing now, is it? Yeah. It's all right, isn't it? <laughs> it's bloody good here, I tell you. Get yourself booked on it, it's fantastic. You learn so much 
you know, learn so I'm so much quicker today. I've got a Snetterton, a two-day Snetterton track day, end of the month, and I'm really looking forward to that now. Bringing what I've learned here to Snetterton. We've not even gone into braking yet. Now we're talking about braking and trail braking as well. So uh, this will be interesting. Today has all been about visuals, visual stuff, making you faster, basically. This is the last session of the day, so putting everything we've learned into uh, into practice. This is the first session we're allowed to actually use full brakes. You know, we've, we've tried to contract on the visuals and only have light braking. This is the first session where we're, uh, we're allowed to use full on the brakes for this one. So and it's all about trail braking. It's all about braking hard to start with in the corner and then hitting the turning point and then slowly releasing the brake as you go into the corner. So but what we've got to try and do, what we've learned all day long is visual stuff. So as you can see, they've drawn on some uh, marks on the track. So that's your turning point. Then you look up to your apex. Then you look up to a reference point further away, or your exit, corner exit. And then you look again at your next, towards your next turning point. So the whole day has been about visual skills, basically. Where you look, don't leave your eyes darting about the place. Look a bit further away. You know, bringing in everything we learned in, in level one two years ago. So it's taken a little while to get used to all the, the level one stuff to come back to me. Break, 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 and then slowly release as you go into the corner. Look at your rest, your apex, look at your, your exit point. Look towards your next turning point on the brakes. Release the brakes as you go into the corner. Hit the apex, look up the road to your next point. Up a cod. There's one next turning point. Hang off the bike. Next apex, next turning point is there. Brake, 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 release the brake. Throw it into this one. I'm just cool, I don't know. And the gas coming out of it, drive it out. Yeah! Ah! Apex. <laughs> oh dear. Someone's off roading. Someone's off roading. <laughs> oh jeez. Oh jeez. <laughs> If Cooper went then, so did I. Oh, that's Mike. Can you show me break? Release the brake slowly. Hard on the brake. Release the brakes, so it's quite hard, it's quite tight, a little bend there. Third gear, turn it in, roll on the throttle as you come out. Brake! Turn in. A bit tight on the bars there. Roll on the throttle nicely. this guy but the traction control is limiting my drive out of there. 
I might knock it down the car, I won't adjust it now. Not worth the risk, is it? I didn't know there was any off roading included in today. Yeah, but, yeah, but did you see what I did? What I did? Yeah, you, you just did, stayed relaxed. Yeah, you just. Well, I'm on the. I was going to take you around the 30s, and you just changed your line. I thought. Ah, oh no, and did that, I? That, that slight second, I thought, I've just got to go straight on. Yeah, yeah, go yeah. Go straight on. Don't break. Yeah. Don't do anything nah, bad. You, just, just, just stay relaxed. It looked look fine, at, didn't it? Didn't look look at the look track like, yeah. came out right in front of you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. So yeah, so that's a demonstration of what you do if you, you get it wrong. Yeah. Very well handled, Thank very you. well handled. So, we're looking at braking. What did you find in that session then in terms of braking and the benefits from doing it how we're doing it? It's, I was going a lot harder on the brakes that time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, definitely, I was sort of doing that a bit anyway, I'd say, yeah, sort yeah. of. Or maybe I was getting all the braking done really before I turned in a bit more last time. So I came from the advanced road riding and it was all mainly done on throttle or braking in yeah, a straight line. Yeah, exactly. When I first started coaching and riding with the coaches, they gapped me. I thought, like, yeah. how the hell are they doing it? Yeah. The, the track bikes don't have the brake lights. Yeah, of course. And then of course when they introduced this braking into the one into this level, light bulb. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it's that confidence that really hard in straight line, yeah. you, you carry it into the corner. But you, as you're taking the lean angle, you're letting the brake yeah, pressure go. Yeah. The big thing for me today, for you, is that it's gone from that yeah. to that with the head. That's really helped. And the minute you started getting that, whoa, yeah. your face just went yeah. up a notch. Absolutely fantastic day. I didn't think you could learn as, I thought level one was where you learn more of this everything, you know, you learn most of the stuff in level one, which you do. You do learn the foundations in level one. But level two today, those visual skills, it's really, really improved my riding. So I can't wait for Snetterton now to put this into practice. And uh, it's been fantastic. So I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, subscribe. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers, guys.